Hello everyone, greetings from Pandit Hospital. Today we are going to present you the case of tubotubal anastomosis. The bit difficulty in this case is that the distal portion is quite small close to the femoral end which is at least just 3 to 4 mm. So patient had undergone 14 years back open tubal ligation followed which she had loss of 14 years child just recently for which she wants the tubal reversal so here you can observe that distal portion is really small with a small cyst over it so first I am trying to do the anatomical correction of the distal portion here I am going to use the PCOD drilling needle with monopolar cutting current on it. So this proximal end of the femoral portion has rotated and come laterally. So I am using just a small cutting current for releasing that band and making it straight so here I am getting only 2 to 3 mm length on the distal portion of the tube and on the proximal segment I am cutting the serosa then gripping the muscular layer by my assistant and for opening the mucosal layer I am going to use the old scissor but before giving the neck I am going to inject the vasopressin so that when I cut the mucosal layer it should not bleed much the main purpose of injecting vasopressin is that I have to see the lumen of the tube properly without bleeding so now I am using the cold scissor for cutting the both ends of the tube. As this distal end is quite short, I am not going to check the patency of this end. We have checked the patency of the proximal end. When you are ever you are checking the patency, the methylene blue should be concentrated so that it should stain the mucosa of the tube which is going to help us when we are going to take the bites through it so now we are taking the stay suture through the mesosalpingeal portion these are working for the bringing both the ends together I am going to put a figure of 8 stitch at this point And we are going to use the 50 Y reel for this. So this is going to bring the both ends together, which is going to help us for taking the bite from the mucosal layer at 6 o'clock 12 o'clock so you can observe here the proximal end is really small so I am taking the 6 o'clock stitch from outside in and now inside out from the distal portion here I am taking the bite from the mucosa so that whenever we tighten all the stitches it should be leak proof we are going to use here the 50y grill we are intentionally keeping the threads longer now we are going to take the bite from 3 o'clock 
from the distal portion and mid proximal portion so here we are taking just the muscular layer and the mucosal layer we have cut the thread we haven't tightened it the intention behind the cutting the thread and not tightening is that we can evert the margins to see the lumen of the tube if we tighten the nine o'clock stitch further stitches we can't take through the lumen so for that reason we are keeping the stitches loose and we are going to tighten it at the end as you observe the proximal lumen is quite small so we are going to put only two sorry, only three stitches through the lumen after which we are going to suture the siroza over it there are two schools of thought about the suture material and the suturing some prefer the monofilament sutures so that their tissue reaction should be minimum we are using the vicryl here for the purpose that it is easy for tying the knot another thing is that some people prefer the interrupted closure of the siroza we prefer the continuous suturing of the siroza layer so as we have kept the 6 o'clock stitch longer while cutting we have tightened the siroza layer there and here you can is watch that mithrin blue is coming freely from the fimbrial end again the same situation is on the left side so first we are going to inject the vasopressin you can use the vivia and needle for that or you can use the spinal needle from the center to inject the vasopressin while injecting we have to inject it close to the tube so that when we cut the tube it should not bleed there is lot of fibrosis seen on the left side along with the cyst so here i punctured the tube accidentally but for the <clears throat> final cut we are going to use the scissors so we are just cutting the siroza layer by pulling the mucosa and muscular layer so that is the cyst which is over the femoral end so first i am restoring the anatomy until and unless your anatomy is clear don't take the stitches if tube gets evert entire procedure will fail so again i'm taking out the cyst wall still there is lot of fibrous tissue which is i am taking while using the monopolar current reduce the current setting so that it lateral spread and damage should be minimized so here you can visualize the muscular portion and the mucosal portion we have exposed after puncturing the cyst now we are opening the tube and the mucosa here by the cold scissors so here you can see the mucosa of the distal end it's really short end 
on the distal side so now we are checking the patency of this again the intention of checking the patency is to check the patency as well as to stain the mucosa so that we can stitch it properly through the lumen so again the first stitch at 6 o'clock through the mesosulfings this stay stitch is going to bring the both the ends together this procedure really needs lot of patience for the anatomical correction and for surety is needed when you are putting the stitch through the 6 o'clock 9 o'clock that we are stitching it in proper anatomical position so there is bleeding I am not able to visualize the mucosa of the distal end but I am able to visualize the mucosa of the proximal end so I pierce through the 6 o'clock and now I am piercing through the distal end through the mucosa there is definitely going to be a mucosal mismatch of proximal and distal end but we are trying to give the best from our side for the anastomosis of the tubes so the 6 o'clock stitch is over now we are taking the 3 o'clock stitch again from the muscularis to the mucosa and from mucosa to the muscularis so the three o'clock stitch is over here as we are having the larger lumen on the left side we are not going to tie the suture at the end we can easily pass the needle as well as evert the edges so we are not cutting the thread and tying the knots at the end on the left side because it is a bigger lumen comparatively to the right side now I am taking the 12 o'clock stitch depending on the lumen size we have to decide whether to take 3 or 4 stitches through it and in this procedure 3D is going to help a lot with the depth perception Now we are going to close the C rosa. Some amount of leak is okay. When tissue heals, that leak is going to get sealed at the end. So that is a free spillage without any leak from the anastomotic site the femoral the methylene blue is freely coming from the femoral end thank you